purchased by the Lord, and his heart was changed completely. This slave that wronged Philemon to a uh, really extent where, where it cost him a lot of money, um, this Onesimus came to Paul, and, and this Onesimus became a son of Paul. Instead of a slave, changed to a son. And Paul, that was this prisoner, instead of a prisoner, changed to a father. And now with um, Paul that had great relationship with, with Philemon and, and respect for Philemon, wrote this letter. But one, the one thing you must understand, it was not like an email that was sent through and, 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 and he could read the email ahead of time and prepare his heart. Philemon was at his church functioning and suddenly Onesimus came with a letter. There was a person accompanying him. You can just imagine him arriving there at the church and he sees Philemon. He must be furious in his heart because of the offense of, of Onesimus' side. And here Onesimus comes bearing this letter and, and you can just imagine this Philemon being, what is going on here? Suddenly I see you coming from nowhere. You've done this offense. Now you come into, you have the audacity to come back into the church and you bear this letter and suddenly he opens this letter and he starts reading this, this this letter that we've just been reading now is the is the letter Philemon received at that moment at that instant and Onesimus was standing there so um, is it possible we can get the uh, PowerPoint on uh, almost yes almost there then we can close Oh, interesting thing about the slavery as well. By that time, many people that were very poor sold themselves as, uh, uh, into the position of slaves so that they can receive money. But then you, then you put yourself in a position where you have no rights. You are at the lowest level in the Roman society. Um, other people were born into slavery, and other people even sold their children into slavery. So that's a... Uh, oh, yeah, here we go. Thank you. Now we can go with the PowerPoint. Okay. So you can go to the next one, please. Okay, I already spoke about the limitless vengeance. All right. Let's quickly get, get, get into the text. So um, if you look at verse 3, that word that says, Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. That word peace does, does not only imply a good relationship that one has with the Lord and a uh, and, uh, um, a, a good walking that one has with the Lord. It, let me, a, a proper a relationship God and God and by, by grace through His Holy Spirit and faith. So the only way that you can come to a place and position yourself in that peace is really laying down of the heart. That is one of the key things to, to move into in relationship with God. Is when you have peace with Him, you, you move into a place of maturity. Peace is always the, the, the key thing that helps you to be in step with his spirit. And here, um, Paul starts with that word peace. Very important thing to focus on. All right, and then I want to quickly uh, look at verse 5 and 7. Look at how Paul is describing Philemon's faith. At verse 5, Because I hear of your love and of the faith that you have towards the Lord Jesus and all the saints. And verse 7, I have derived much joy and comfort um, from your love, my brother, because of the hearts of the saints have been refreshed by you. Philemon has been faithful. He's been doing what he is supposed to do. He has been faithful. And now he has been challenged by Paul to go to even next step. Here where a guy has truly wronged him and where he could retaliate and really deal with him in a, in a certain situation. Paul was now asking him to do a certain thing. All right. So um, let me, yes, Onesimus, the word Onesimus, the name Onesimus means useful. It's quite ironic because Onesimus was useful. It was actually a name that was used a lot as um, for, for slaves. But now Onesimus, that's supposed to be useful, became useless because he ran away. Okay? So it's quite ironic in uh, the meaning of his name. And, um, but the amazing thing that happened was in the midst of the confrontation, even while Onesimus was, was in, in a place of wrong, he encountered the Lord with Paul and things changed completely. So he was saved by the Lord and he has become a son of, of Paul and he went through a transformation process in his side and now even though the relationship between him and Philemon was not restored, in Christ he was redeemed completely. All right, So that's a very important thing to understand. Sometimes 
when we go through things and we have wronged people and we've wronged ourselves and we have we've, we've faltered we have made mistakes when we are in christ it is very important to fix our identity why why is it important to fix our identity we are not defined by things that have taken place in our lives the things that we do situations that took place in the past situations that take place now and the future circumstances the way that people respond to us does not define us and sometimes we know it in our minds but our hearts need that revelation in our that revelation you need, that needs to break open and the only way you can get to that place of of, of, of being established in that is encounter with him encounter with the lord that's why it's part of our church um mission and, and the, the approach that we have towards it is that we need to encounter him or we approach him in worship but the the heart is to encounter him because when we encounter him in relationship our hearts are transformed and we are we are we are established on the revelation that he loves us and we are defined by him it is a very important thing to fix in our lives sometimes we think we believe that but in the way that we respond and look the way that we live our lives we need to truly look and reflect on how do we really live and how do we really respond to the situation do we really believe that he loves us and that we are defined by him and that other way that people respond to us does not define us. That's a very, very, very important thing to fix. Now, here Onesimus goes. Now, just imagine this. Onesimus has wronged Philemon. He knows that Philemon can punish him severely. He goes back, faces the church with this letter. He's also confronted in the heart. So there's a lot of things that we can learn from this. Onesimus has been changed and redeemed through believing in Christ, in faith in Christ. That's a very important thing to establish. So no matter what we have done, if we truly come to the to the Lord and lay down our hearts and are sorry for what we have done and repent and believe in Him as a Lord, uh, a Lord and Savior, and that He came to the earth and died on the cross and rose again the third day, if we believe that, believe in Him as our Lord and Savior, He establishes us and, us and redeems us. It is a done thing. So that's that instantly happened. And sometimes we we need to fix that, and we still go through a process of. Being, re being redeemed in relationship and and things falling into place. So, so that's the first thing I want you to see is Onesimus wronged Philemon, but he had a change of heart. He wasn't a slave anymore. He changed to a son. Okay, so s remember when I say son, um, there's, there's a lot of references to male, female, all those things. The point is just in the family of the Lord. So we are either sons or daughters in the family when we are, when we are in faith. Okay. So I wanted to just uh, focus that, the realizing of who we are in Christ, like Jesus' disciples, fixing our identity, standing up, up in redemption and momentum for his kingdom. The moment we know that we are loved in our hearts, the moment we do not try have other motives as things that we try to do and accomplish things, but the moment our hearts want to um, be, be obedient towards him in a relationship. There's a, cha there's a change from must do it, having to do things like you must do this for the lord to a, a change of wanting to do it in relationship that's a very fundamental practical change that takes place and that can only take place with a change of heart when god encounters us in our heart okay so onesimus had this encounter and he was willing to take the letter and go all the way and confront philemon after he has wronged philemon and uh, sometimes God is calling us to stand up and who he has called us to be, even if it's a confrontational, even if it is hard to do so. All right, let's go to the next slide. Thank you. All right, let's go to verse 12. I'm sending him back to you, sending my very heart. Now look at how Paul is just expressing his heart. He's using a metaphor here, uh, uh, comparing um, Onesimus to his own very heart. Paul adored Onesimus he, he adopted him completely and it's what I love about the Paul, heart of Paul Paul was this Pharisee that knew so much and God humbled him so deeply to a place of of embracing people that miss it completely and that's the point we all need Jesus no matter how many gifts a person has how much experience a person has that everything that the person has gone through how holy a person looks or how every, uh, if, even if everything looks in line for other person's life. The point is, if a person thinks that he can function without Jesus, that person is even more lost. All right, so we all need Jesus. 
And um, Paul had this heart of loving those that needed him. And, uh, and that is a beautiful example to us, that the way that we need to respond to others and love others around us. Okay, let's go to the next point. Um, Philemon, the readiness for faithfulness to God's heart and call. Oh, just go back. Yes. Um, Philemon, the readiness for faithfulness to God's heart and call. Practically relationship with others. Sometimes, so uh, just a little bit softer, the music. Thank you. So sometimes we, we, we are not like in the position of an ACMS where we need to step forward and confront things and face things where we have wrong. Sometimes we are in the position of Philemon where others have wronged us and we are in the place that we need to forgive them, it is sometimes it feels like it's so hard because you are so aware of the pain that has taken place where the person inflicted that pain upon us. But yet God is calling us for you to forgive those people and to love them. So sometimes to really practically be a Christian costs a lot. Now, how do we keep on going and, and, and not give up on doing so? Is First of all, we, God has called us together as a church. Together we are here with different gifts to encourage one another, to stand with one another. All right? And in doing so, we need to encourage one another in walking the right walk by loving others, even those that, that have wronged us and have, have really made misuse of a situation and all those things. And yes, we need to and, and also the other thing that I wanted to say is in really encountering his love, that knowing that he loves us, we can give that love that is given to us to that person. But it is still confronting and it's sometimes very difficult to do so. But with him and really having that encounter of the heart with him, he can lead us to that place. All right. You can go to the next slide. Thank you. Okay. Like I said, whatever Philemon has done, there, there was a loss of money that was part of it. Okay, so Paul asked Philemon to charge him the, the losses. Now look at what Paul is doing here. Not only is he expecting or asking, earnestly asking Philemon to forgive Onesimus, he, what he's also doing is he's saying to Philemon, Philemon, whatever Onesimus has done towards you, I am willing to pay it back. I'm willing to stand in the gap and I'm willing to make compensation for the me for the damage that has been caused to Onesimus now that is a, also a beautiful picture that reminds us of Christ and what Christ has done for us where Paul wasn't deserving deserving to pay anything so the same with us Christ was willing to step into our place where Onesimus wronged um, Philemon and stole from him or take took money from him or let Philemon lose money um, so we are in a position where we are inflicted by sin. Sin is the big problem in life. And with outside of Christ, sin is keeps us as slaves, right? And now Christ has come by based on what he has done, and he takes that price of sin upon himself, and he pays that price for us, and he bears it for us, right? So that's such a beautiful picture for me, how Paul is almost um, a, a Christ figure in this book. He represents Christ in the way that he, it, 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 that he, that he uh, acts in this situation. Paul says in one of his books that he says, imitate me as I imitate Christ. Paul was such a good example in following Jesus that he was li literally living God's word. And you will see it. He was, he was willing to stand in the gap for the sake of Philemon and Onesimus being reconciled. Okay. And uh, Philemon could be this picture of a father where, where we have been separated with sin from the father. So um, Christ brings us back. He pays the price so that we can have a relationship with, father, with the father once more. And uh, Onesimus can be representing us where we sometimes have wronged things or wronged someone. And a situation is just out of control. And sometimes we just miss it. That's part of the confrontation and the uh, limited state of humanity is that we fall short. All right, so that it's such a beautiful thing that, that Paul was demonstrating here to us. An amazing thing, as you can see in verse 19, just want to go back to verse 19. It says, I will write this with my own hand. I will repay it to say nothing of your owing me, even your own self. Paul was adamant. He was determined. He was, he was um, fixed in his commitment that he is,
is going to, that he will bring, bring the provision for Philemon so that Philemon and Onesimus can reconcile if it is necessary. All right, and then same benefit in the Lord. So Onesimus came to this place where he encountered the Lord and the Lord changed everything for him and he embraced him. Where he, Onesimus, was the slave that had no rights and no position in, in society, suddenly redeemed in position that he is even on the same level as his master and on the same level as Paul the Apostle because in Christ we are all equal before him. So now just as that benefit uh, that Onesimus found in the Lord, Paul was asking um, Philemon, please can we benefit from you that you respond in a way to Onesimus that you will also be gracious towards him. Paul was asking, please for my sake and my relationship towards you, Philemon, please forgive Onesimus. And, and, and Paul was quite confident that Philemon would be able to do so. Let's go to the next slide. All right, and the other words that Paul, Paul's, Paul was saying is, let me find in you as I have found in him the true Onesimus. So when we come to a place of really coming to know who God is, if we see who God is, we can truly come to a place of seeing we are in him. Onesimus came to a place of encountering God. No matter that he was called a slave or that he has done things wrong, he has encountered God's love for him. So he was positioned in a place of finding who he is meant to be and who God has called him to be. Sometimes we find ourselves in a situation where we believe certain things about ourselves and God is calling us to stand in according to what he is calling us. He has a word over every single person here, sitting here today, every single person. He has a word for you. And sometimes when we look at our, look at our circumstances, we are, it seems so convincing that that everything that's taking place and confronting us is the truth. But what God is saying about you is the thing that stands. His truth even trumps the, the facts, the things that you're confronted with. That is the thing that we need to fix. And that's where faith comes in, trusting, saying, Lord, what is your word for my life? I choose to fix it. In the mornings when you wake up and you see yourself in the mirror, say to yourself what the word of God is saying. Say, call yourself what he is saying. We need to establish that. We need to fix that. That's very important. All right. Um, all right. So Paul confident that Philemon will do even more. Let's quickly look at verse 21. Confident of your obedience, I write to you knowing that you will do even more than I say. So Paul was, was very uh, in the relationship. He tried to really convince Philemon. Philemon, please just be gracious towards this guy that, that wronged you. And um, he was very convincing in, in the way that he approached things. All right. And then um, I just want to quickly, um, Rousseau spoke about some things that I went through. I want to actually share something that, that God has done for me. So in 2018, I uh, finished things at the Bible College in Brumiria, Levenberg, Brumiria. And I came here to this church at Pastor Matthijs. And, and he said he really wants me to be part of the church, but he first wants me to to receive, uh, get the heart of the church and everything that's going, taking place. And he asked me to go to ARC and to just be the volunteer at ARC so that I can really um, see what the, the church is all about. And then for uh, the last part of 2018, I served as a volunteer there. And at the end of 2018, the Lord spoke to me and he said to me, Vilalem, you might not be struggling with drugs and drugs destroys your own life and all those things, but you are struggling with the religion. Now, I want to explain what I mean with that. I just want a uh, sip of water. If you look at the Pharisees in the, in the New Testament, they had so much knowledge about God. But that knowledge was head knowledge, all right? They were very re re religious let me explain it to you they were following rules according to what they that they were supposed to do and all those things but they were hypocrites they were saying one thing and doing doing the other thing for instance they would walk and uh, would have a lot of money and they would throw it into the offering bag and then people would hear how much they are giving and they would pray out loud and loud and loud and just want people to look at them and just see how impressive they are and to feel good about themselves and so their motives even though they knew a lot about about this word their motives were for themselves they were hypocritical they were very critical as well they would criticize other people and then, then they would themselves would not do those things 
And um, unfortunately, they had knowledge about God, but not relational knowledge. Let me explain this, for instance, in an example. Say we think about an uh, important person, for instance, a president. Say you, you go and you do research about the person, try and find out as much about the president as you can. You study it, and then suddenly one day you see the president, and you go towards the president, and you start speaking about the president, to the president about everything you know about the president. And the president's going to look at you, and he's going to, yeah, he's going to frown because he doesn't really know you. You know so much about him, but he doesn't know you. And that's what it's like, what it was like with some of the Pharisees. They had a lot of knowledge about God, but their, their relational knowledge about God, God was not there. Even if you look at the word no, if you go to the book of Genesis, that word no is a very deep and intimate word. It says there, Adam knew Eve, Eve. So it even speaks about them sleeping together. That word no is a very, very deep word. It is not only head knowledge. It is a relational, relational deep knowledge. Now what God was saying to me is, Valalem, you have all this knowledge of me going, going through Bible college, but you do not know my heart. You're not carrying my heart. You are hypocritical. You are critical. I would sit in a sermon and then I would listen to somebody preaching and I would be so critical and say, oh, that's not in context and that's not right and that's wrong and... And I was so critical towards other people where I would um, keep the standard towards them and measure them towards that standard. And then people feel so discouraged that they just, that they feel s just want to leave it, you know. And so the Lord said to me, Valalem, even though you are not struggling with drugs and it doesn't bring damage to your own life, you, because of the way that you're functioning, are driving people away from our heart because of this religious thing that you're doing and your heart is just misplaced and it's all about you and going about yourself and the lord told me Valalem, i want you to book into ark one january 2019 to 31st of january 2019 and that didn't make sense at all to me trust me most people didn't understand that it was very hard for me to do but i knew that the lord was saying that to me and when i booked into ark the first three months i tried so hard to um with my own strength, let go of this thing. But the more I tried, the more I fall into fell into performance, trying to uh, not be religious, but doing it in my own strength. And that just was counterproductive. It didn't work. And then at the, the fourth month, I just said to the Lord, Lord, I just can't do this anymore. And he said to me, well, Alan, let me do this for you. And what he did was he helped me really break through that year. And I was an ark. It was so humbling um, being surrounded um, with, with a couple of guys, and I also s just saw that different bro brokenness just m manifests differently. And um, God, God re redeemed me there, and He touched my heart, and He taught me a very important thing. He said to me, the remedy for religion is relationship. The remedy for religion is relationship. So the word remedy, mean, uh, for those that do not know it, the, the medicine, the solution for being fixed in this lifestyle trying to do things to to please God. The, 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 the way out of that is a relationship with God. Many times we are in a lifestyle of trying to do good works to try and win God's approval to feel better about ourselves. That's a very big, um, dangerous place to be. We need to understand that when we come into a place of receiving God's gift, the gift cannot be worked for. There's nothing that we can do in our lives. Nothing that will ever be able to achieve or earn what God has done for us on the cross. We cannot come close to it. So what is the practical thing to do to make that change and to, to break that transition is when God gives you this gift that he has done on the cross, the only thing you can do is receive it. Like, you, like a gift that is given to you, take it. Literally receive it and make it your own. You do not have to work for it. You do not have to go into a life of performance to show God that you're actually a bit okay and that you're feeling better about yourself. It will never work. And many people sit in churches for years, even for the, the rest of their lives, trying to achieve, just trying to live good lives, to feel better about themselves, and maybe God will be gracious towards them. That is a very dangerous place to be. God had to liberate me. He need, I, I had to... Save me from that place because we are loved by Him and that's it. It is unconditional love. There's nothing that we can do to receive, uh, to, um, to earn that love. 
But there's one thing that we do in response to it is that we, we are open to receive it from Him, take it for ourselves in faith. So it's a free gift, but it's very costly. So even though it's free, we should w respect, work with respect with this because it's been paid with His everything. He has given His Son, He's given Himself completely. So um, speaking about relationship, I just want to quickly go to Galatians 5 verse 1. Please page with me to the book of Galatians. Paul also writing this book, very interesting. And um, in this book of Galatians, Paul is actually speaking to the people about this religious approach and people that were still fixed on the old way of thinking and the old covenant. Old covenant is very important. The Old Testament is very important. It's the foundation. But Jesus comes to fulfill that. He comes to fulfill that. Okay, let's quickly go to Galatians. Galatians 5 verse 1. For freedom Christ has set us free. Stand firm, therefore, and do not um, yet again submit to a yoke of slavery. So uh, this, this whole picture of slavery and uh, a thing that is also bring, brings people into slavery is sin. But the other thing to, that my personal testimony, even having moved from sin into him, is when we are in the church, it is very, very important to really be personal with God. When you speak to him, be honest with him in relationship. All the knowledge that we have needs to be practical. It needs to be in our hearts. We need to, we need to walk practically and apply his word, but to know him personally. Not only know knowledge about him. How do we start to that, get to that place? Is just being brutally honest with where you are at this moment, what you're feeling, what's going on in your heart. To speak to God about that. Just to voice it to him. And then, very important thing is just to listen and then to respond in true relationship. Like you would speak to any other person that is in front of you. Just be honest with him. Do not fall into this lifestyle of ritual where you're just saying a prayer because you need to say it. Move into a place of really speaking to a person that is real, that is, that is interested in you, that has given everything for you. All right. So I wanted to say that. And then I want to challenge you. Okay. I'm going to do it as well. Uh, next time when I preach, I will give him a testimony or share what I have done. But the very important thing is we need to apply what Scripture says. So it is not always easy, but he's, he's, he's calling us to, to love those that has even wronged us. And um, I think the first step is I'm challenging each and every one of you to go and sit with the Lord and speak to him and be honest with him, saying where, where you are at this moment. Speak to him and say to him, Lord, is there a person that I need to go to? Is there a person that you want me to go to, to to just demonstrate your grace to others? Or even, that, is there any person in my heart that I have not forgiven before? Um, like Philemon was confronted to do. On the spot, there where the church was, here Philemon comes, Ach, Onesimus comes with the letter that Paul has sent. And he was confronted to forgive Onesimus there on the spot, called by Paul to do so. So, go and sit with the Lord, even if it's just one person, and ask the Lord, who do I need to reach out to? Is there a person that has wronged me? Is there a person that I have offense in my heart, uh, heart towards? Is there, is there unforgiveness in my heart towards a certain person? And, and just ask the Lord for wisdom. How does He want you to respond to that? And um, if there's any person that has a, has a testimony on that, please, in the future, would love to give you room to share that as well. But um, I've learned from, from Scripture that that what we read, we should not only fix in our hearts, we need to live it and apply it because then we see his heart. And in living his word and applying his word, things change. And when things change here, everything changes. When we see more of who he is, everything changes. All right. So, I had a call to relationship. The, the heart of what I wanted to share tonight, just to summarize again, is first of all, Paul at such a revelation of God's heart. And he could carry it over and challenge Philemon to do the same because Paul had the encounter in his heart. And now he was challenging Philemon to forgive Onesimus. And even Onesimus being in a position of being confronted with where he were and what he has done, where he was and what he has done, I had to step up in who he really is. So God is calling us, first of all, to encounter him and make his, the, the, the encounter that we have with him very personal. And from that place, be 
being established in who, we, what he say, who he says uh, we are, and then from that place moving forward to receive his love and giving it to others. Okay, there's, there's a lot of application in, of this high call to relationship, but we as church are called to reach out to one another and love one another beyond our comfort. And unfortunately, in the Western culture, one of the thing that, things that cripple the church is comfort. And here we see that Onesimus of Philemon, even Paul, he was in prison, was called out of comfort. And it doesn't seem nice to hear that, but listen to me. When you move out of comfort and you move into dependence and faith on him, you, the, the encounter of his presence, there's nothing, nothing, nothing that you can even imagine in this world that comes close to that. So um, when we walk with him, he gives us more than we can imagine. One thing that I've learned that meant, meant so much to me is, what is the sole purpose of why we are here on earth? What is the main thing why we are here on earth? What's, what's the thing that we are called to do? And that is to know God in everything that we do. Now, I already explained the word know. It's a very deep relational word. When we know God in everything that we do, we have respect for Him and we, we acknowledge Him in everything and we honor Him according to what he wor His word says in every sphere of our lives, every aspect of our lives making him part of, of that and laying down what we prefer in the situation and letting his will be done in that situation. When we walk in that intimate knowledge of God in every area of our lives, we are walking in the fullness of what he has destined us to be. And he has, he has made us as beings of relationship to know him and know, other, know those around us. So when we truly get that, and you can only get that when God encounters your heart, the real church comes forth. And the, the name that we have, Acts 29, we are called to walk in the example that we see the New Testament church walk in. We are called to do that. All right? But it starts with that encounter in the heart and an establishing of identity, receiving love to give that love in a place of discomfort sometimes. Like for this morning, where the power went off just before I had to start preaching. And... Um, but God is just gracious in what He's doing. We sometimes need to see the bigger picture of how loving He is. He wants to set us free of our own control and strife so that we can rely upon Him because that's where true freedom lies. Because He is so capable, capable and He is so powerful. And He's the one that will come through for us and guide us and give us everything that we need, the provision, the wisdom, the protection, just the encouragement, the strengthening. And then when we do that, we as a church will rise up and love one another beyond measure. And then the people outside will see, my goodness, there's something going on there and I want that. That is where the change comes. And it starts with that honesty in relationship with, with God and putting ourselves a little bit out of comfort. So I'm challenging each and every one of you. Let's be practical, practical about what the word is saying. And let's step even if it's for one person step into a place of discomfort to love a person without any expectation and let the lord minister to your heart on that and just the heart of this sermon all right so um i'm gonna pray for us lord jesus thank you that you are so faithful so consistent that you truly see so much more than we can even imagine. We have our certain way of looking at reality. We have a certain way of just experiencing life. And you are so vast. You are amazing in your understanding and the way that you see life. And you see us and your heart towards us. Lord, sometimes we keep ourselves in a place of poverty because we embrace things that we think will sustain us where we do not always realize the riches that are when we truly know you. I pray for every single person that is here, Lord, that you will help them just encounter you, personally know you, not just walk forward and in, 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 in their understanding of how people used to do things and just do it because everyone is doing it, but to really do it with meaning, not because we must, because we want to every person encounter you so that they walk in true relationship with you and from that Lord may that, that love flow to others so that our church can become practical and 
God's faithful. I'm just going to expand it. People can come to know Jesus. Thank you, Lord, that you're calling each and every one of us to a higher call of relationship. You have demonstrated to us, Lord, the, the definition in Scripture of what love is, that when one would lay down his life for another. Give us the love so that we can see what love is, who you are, Jesus, the one that is love, so that we can love one another. Thank you for setting us free from ourselves and from comfort. And thank you for leading us to a place of liberty in you, knowing you in everything that we do. In the name of Jesus. Lord, speak to every, every one of us regarding the person that we need to, re need to re re reach out to. And I pray, Lord, may your glory be known in this situation. And help us, Lord, help us really to, to walk in the way that you've demonstrated to us in the book of Acts. Because that's the calling on our church. In the name of Jesus. Amen.